city and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Fancy job, and it makes a man watchful and a little lonely. The blazing sun and dust, dust everywhere, and the hot, dry wind from the panhandle baking your lungs driving the blood to your brain and goading you into things that you might not even think of any other time. Yeah, that's what the summer days are like in Dodge City. But the nights are different. After sundown, when the warm dark lies soft and gentle on the prairie, then everything changes. Yeah, the nights are fine. And it's that blast and killing heat of the day that breathes the trouble. Claire. Yeah, sure, it's her, all right. Huh? Who are you talking about, Chester? Who's her? Uh, Lucy. Huh? Oh, you remember her, Mr. Dillon. That girl old Lee from Hunt took out a long branch saloon and married last winter. Lucy was her name, Mr. Middleton. Oh. Come down the street there. Oh, yeah. First time I saw her in a month of Sundays. I hear old Lee fried pretty close herd on her. Looks like she's coming here. I never could figure them two, Mr. Jones. Why she'd ever marry him, I mean. And 800 acres of mighty good rangeland. How are you, Matt? Hello, Lucy. Uh, I want you to sit on. I haven't time, Matt. I I can't let Ephraim know I came here. Oh, why not? Uh, Why did you come? Ephraim is going to kill me. What? It's true. He told me so. I know everybody thinks he's so good. He studied to be a preacher and all, but, but but he's not good. He's mean and he's cruel. I made an awful mistake when I married him, and now he won't let me go. Well, why does he want to kill you? Well, he, he accuses me of things. Crazy, terrible things. Well, do you want to file a charge? Have him locked up? My word against his? With him always quoting scripture and the like, and me six months out of the dance hall? People can't forget that. Well, maybe it's only you who can't forget it, Lucy. Matt, I've been reminded often enough. He keeps telling me I'm evil and that that, that he tried to save me. He said when I married him, I I led him into sin, and now I have to pay. Well, what do you want me to do? Will you talk to him, warn him something? Oh, Matt, he's crazy. I I don't know what he might do. Well, see, I can't take a hand in this without more to go on. Sooner or later, you'll have to take a hand in it, and if you wait too long, you'll have to bring him in for murder. My murder. Think about it, Matt. There you are, Doc. Huh? Oh, thank you. Thank you, Kitty. Mmm. Mmm. Yeah, that's good. That's good. I don't know. What are you grinning at? Not grinning at anything. I suppose you think if you ply me with beer, you can get me fuddled enough to beat me. Well, don't drink if it bothers you. No, it doesn't bother me that much. <clears throat> Besides, I taught you everything you know about Chuck. Come on, Doc, it's your move. I know, I know. Don't rush me now. Hey, that's my man. I wasn't going to move it. I was just reaching over it. Don't get too excited. <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> there. You sure that's the move you want to make? Well, I moved him, didn't I? All right. Jump. Oh, you're so smart. You you bet your life I'll jump. 
Now, what are you going to do? This. Oh. Oh. Yeah, well, that's gratitude for you. I teach you how to play, and now you beat me. <laughs> don't take it so hard, Doc. Have some more beer. Uh, don't try to get back to my good hey, friend. Doc. Oh, Matt, there's Matt. Matt, over here. <laughs> oh, Doc. Kitty. Hello, no, Matt. Uh, what are you looking so pleased about, Kitty? Yeah, she just whooped me in a game of checkers, and she's vain as a peacock. Sit down, and I'll play you again. Oh? You know what I mean, Matt? Oh, maybe later. I, I'm looking for you from Hunter right now. Oh, he was over there at the bar a few minutes ago. Huh? Yeah, there he is. Uh, I want to talk to him for a minute. I'll see you later. Oh, you get the sermon. <laughs> Maybe that's what I need. Evening, Mr. Hunt. Oh, Marshal. Uh, will you join me? Oh, thank you. Dress for Marshal Dillon, Sure. Evil it may be, but a vast help indeed in banishing the cares of the day. A man like you shouldn't have any cares, Mr. Hunt. Care looks everywhere in this veil of tears, Marshal. Man's brief joy is dearly bought. Huh? Your good fortune, sir. Luck. Uh, how's the business? Uh, uh, health is excellent, as it usually is in youth. A state of grace may be somewhat uncertain. No. There's nothing that can't be dealt with. It's a man's bounden duty in this world to lend his own strength to the frail reeds of his household, to support them against the storm and strife of this temporal life. The man is a rock, sir, and the woman a reed swayed by the wind. But if the rock happens to break the reed... What about that, Mr. Hunt? I doubt the rock will break the reed, Marshal. Uh, good evening, sir. Good evening. Uh, you were right, Kitty. I got a sermon. Thought you would. Uh, Kitty. Hmm? You knew Lucy pretty well when she worked here, didn't you? Sure. Tell me about her. Well, what's she after? What does she want? Chance to be somebody. But she's hard enough. She'll use anybody to get what she wants. That's why she married a Yeah. But there's something else she might not know now. Oh? There's a young fellow working out there at Ethan's place. Booth Ryder. Oh, you mean that kid who drifted in a couple of months ago? Mm-hmm. Well, how does he figure? Well, I don't know. But I do know Lucy. And you can take it from me, Matt. He figures. talking to you, Marshal, but I reckon I better get back to work. Unless you uh, got something else in your mind. No, nothing, I guess. I just wondered how things were going. But... Oh, I like it fine here. Ah, I understand Ephraim's a good man to work for. It. I got no complaint. Mm-hmm. Uh, how do you get along with Miss Hunt? Fine. Why? Oh, I just wondered. Uh, weren't you wearing a gun when you first rode into town? Mr. Hunt don't hold with guns. He don't pack one himself. Never had any reason to, I guess. You got something on your mind, Marshal? You're a young man, Booth. Uh, this is a big world. Why don't you go take a look at it? Some of the big spreads up north or on out west in the territories. <laughs> Marshal, with a setup like I got here, a man would be crazy to pull out. He might be crazier to stay. No, I like it fine here. Just fine. All right. I can't run you out. That's your life, Booth. As long as it lasts. It 
is. Oh, I... Yeah. What in the world are you sitting inside for? I mean, what little breeze there are, you'd be cooler sitting on porch. Yeah, I suppose so. How have you been? Oh, just kindly dogging around town. Yeah, you picked a good night for it. Well, it ain't so hot if you don't move too fast. As a matter of fact, Jones' store ain't that bad. We were sitting there eating pickles and swatting flies. Pickles? In this heat? Well, at least they're wet. Yeah. Hey, you know them new greener rifles that Jonas got in a couple weeks back? Yeah, what about them? Well, Jonas sold all eight of them rifles in two weeks. Old Ethan Hunt bought the last one just tonight. Ephraim? Yes, sir. He never owned a gun in his life that I know of. He does now. Say, if he never owned one before, I wonder why he bought one now. I think maybe I know, Chester. I'll see you later. Boat. Boat. Up here on the porch. You out of your mind, Lucy? Ethan's out in the barn. Yeah, but... Come here, boy. Lucy. He bought a gun, Bruce, in town this evening. He's got it out there with him now. He's drinking. He's going to kill us. Both of us. He told me so. What'd you tell him? Nothing. Nothing. He's suspicious, that's all. Oh, but he's crazy, Bruce. He'll do it. You've got to get that gun away from him. Yeah. Well, that, that might take some doing. But you can do it. You've got a gun, too, and you know how to use it. He doesn't know one end from the other. You've got to do it. It's the only way. Maybe the marshal was right. I I have stayed here too long. You can't leave now, Bruce. Can you? No, I can't. Then you've got to do it. It'll be better to face him. If you don't, he'll lay for you and shoot you in the back and, and then me. I know. I know. Well, it's up to you. Am I... Am I worth it or not? You're worth it. Then go on. Now. It's got me Buffalo, Chester, all the way out from town. I've been trying to figure it. I still don't know. But if it ain't stopped, you know where it's going to lead to. Well, I haven't got a thing to go on. Because a man buys a gun doesn't prove he's planning a murder. And sometimes women get the crazy idea they're in danger when they're not. And a rumor starts easy with a hired hand around the place. No, no. Ten to one, Ephraim will order me off his property and tell me to stay off. And he's got a perfect right to do it. If I was in it. Come on, Chester. I guess we should have got here sooner, Mr. Jones. Yeah. Hey, over this way, Chester. I came from the barn, not the house. Came from inside, the way it sounded. Mr. Jones, look. There's somebody over there on a the horse heading down into the river bottom. I'll let him go. We never catch him in that brush. Not tonight, anyway. I'll just take it easy now. Mr. Hunt? Lucy? Now, over this way. Here, Chester. Hunt. Oh, Marshal. Who did this? No matter. It matters to me. Marshal, I, I admire you. You have implicit faith in the law. When the law covers, covers an old man being a fool, the, the reed survives. Mr. Hunt. Did he say that? 
Right then. Well, I asked Mr. Dillon, what survived? He meant Lucy, Chester. Oh. You stay here. Yes, sir. Where are you going? I have to carry the sad news to the grieving widow. Out there, so Matt. Who were you expecting? Well, I thought it was my husband. I... What are you doing here? What is it, Matt? Has something happened? You heard the shots, didn't you? Well, I heard some shooting a while ago, but... What happened? It's Ephraim, isn't it? Who else would it be? Oh, I don't know. I... It was Ephraim. You really outsmarted me, Miss Hunt. You planned it and you carried it out and you'll get away with it clean as a whistle and I can't touch you. What are you talking about? Your husband's murder. You're out of your mind. I guess I should have figured what you were up to, but I didn't. You were too smart for me. You killed him without touching a trigger. You worked young Booth Ryder up to that. How are you crazy? You got Ephraim to buy that gun. You told him Ryder was bothering you. Wouldn't leave you alone, that he was dangerous. And maybe even hinted he was too old to protect his wife. So he had a gun in his hand when Booth shot him. If Booth Ryder shot my husband, I think you ought to be out looking for him instead of standing here and insulting me. Oh, I'll get him all right. He won't make it far. But what about Booth? You want me to kill him for you? Is he the next one in line? Do you have any proof of what you're saying? Not a bit. Like I said, I can't touch you. You're too smart for me. Or else none of it's true. Have you thought of that? Oh, yeah, I've thought of that. Uh, There's not much point in talking about it. Matt. I... I guess I'll be leaving Dodge soon. I can't stop you. You... You could if you wanted to, Matt. Yeah... three people who can't help landing funny side up. Hermione Gingold, darling of the British Concert Hall. Parker Fenley, famous as Titus Moody and scores more comedy characters. And Kenny Delmar, the man who turned the Claghorn into a national comedy institution. By no coincidence whatsoever, this threesome turns up every weekday on CBS Radio in the new daytime comedy hit, Funny Side Up. These uninhibited people make a topsy-turvy art of conversation and comic hash out of every subject they treat. You'll have no trouble at all keeping your funny side up when you live it up weekdays with Her Majesty Hermione and with Kenny and Parker. The time, daytime, any weekday. The place, modesty be hanged. We'll come right out and admit it. It's here on CBS Radio. Listen often for Hermione Gingold, Parker Fenley, and Kenny Delmar in the bright new comedy hit Funny Side Up. A great companion to Arthur Godfrey time with Robert Q. Lewis and to Art Linkletter's house party at this same address. Two days passed with no sign of Booth Rider. I figured he was waiting it out somewhere around town, waiting to see which way the wind was going to blow, but I didn't know where. And I didn't have much case against him. It was probably a waste of time, but I still had to try I had to bring him in and try. I drink this I just ain't never saw a hot spell last as long as this. It's just enough to downright frazzle a person. Yeah, that's a rough one, all right. Eight o'clock. Almost dark. And that thermometer ain't dropped one notch yet. Keeps on like this much longer. I swear it'll drive folks back east. Now, here comes somebody. I wish it'd drive somewhere. What? Uh, Charlie Belk. Oh, yeah. Reckon he's hunting somebody to stake him to a bottle. Looks like we're going to be honored. Yeah, yeah, I'm afraid we are. You guys evening, Marshal Dillon. How do you, Chester? Charlie, it's real hot tonight, isn't it? Yeah. 
certainly is. Uh, Marshal, I heard the rumor going around. You might be looking for this fellow Booth Rider. Now, that's generally known. Well, I might be able to tell you where he is right now. I could, you uh, There's enough money for a bottle. Well, tell me. Marshal, I, I, I dislike being an informer, of course. No, I feel it's my duty as a citizen. Just to tell me about. Well, Marshal, I want if you to... If you got anything to tell me, say it and get out. Well, he's hiding in the hayloft on the livery stable, but you got no call. You got your money, darling. Now go on, get out. Well, all right. Well, uh, evening, gentlemen. All right, Chester. Let's go get Booth. I don't know, Chester. He's a half-baked kid. I'm afraid he might. It's a doggone shame. You seem to realize when he first came here. Lucy was too much for him. Mm-hmm. Here it is. Yeah. Watch yourself, Chester. Stay clear. Yes, sir. You make it easy on yourself. Come on down and give up. You got no protection up there. I can stand here and throw bullets up into that loft as long as I have to until one of them finds you. All right, your last chance, Booth. Hold it, Marshal. Stay back, Chester. Now, don't be a fool. You hand over that gun. You haven't got a chance. If you try to draw, I'll kill you. And I reckon you better start your killing. Well, at least you won't have to stand no trial. No, he's not dead, Chester. Come on, we'll get him over to Doc's. Take it easy now, if you can. We just about got a hold of it. Now, this could have been a lot worse. I wish it had been. Yes, sure, sure. Now, all right, now, boy. Just brace yourself, boy. There. I'll I'll get a bandage on that now, and you'll live to hang it. Provided you don't get lockjaw. Why do you have to shoot people in stables, Matt? It's the worst place in the world for lockjaw. I'll try to remember that, Doc. sundown, so I, I figured to lay in for the night. And I met Mr. Hunt in the saloon, and he gave me a job. 
I wasn't aiming to stay here, Marshal. You were, though. I was just riding through. Yes, sir? You ought to have kept on riding. Job? Haven't got time. You don't need time. How can a tune job not take time? Improved case I tune up, mister. One can in your gasoline and one can in your oil will clean your motor, your carburetor, your plugs. The works. And case I tune up will unstick those valves. Get you more power and smoother performance. Quicker starting, too. Okay, but how much? Dollar and a quarter a can. Results guaranteed or double your money back. Uh, would you start her up, please? <laughs> Still sounds lousy. I haven't added it yet. Improved case side tune up the tune up in a can. Gunsmoke. Produced and directed in Hollywood by Norman McDonald, stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. The story was specially written for Gunsmoke by Les Crutchfield. With editorial supervision by John Metzen. Featured in the cast were Lynn Allen, Dick Crenna, Joseph Kearns, and Lawrence Sobkin. Harley Bear is Chester, Howard McNear is Doc, and Georgia Ellis is Kitty. <laughs> <laughs> 